Warm welcome to Pray A Night with SOS Church Sweden. Today we're coming together, SOS Church Stockholm, SOS Church Malmö and SOS Church Gothenburg. And I think we will have an amazing night together. Before we go into to the message that I will share today, I just want to let you know that you can put on Swedish subtitles so everyone in the group can follow. Du kan sätta på svensk text längst ner i rutan så att alla kan hänga med på dagens budskap. All right, and I also want to encourage you, if you have some grape juice, if you have some bread back home, that you go and prepare it, because today we will celebrate the Lord's communion together in the same moment all over Sweden, and I think it will be wonderful and powerful. The message I want to share with you today is a message that I call Hungry for More. Hungry for more. We are not satisfied. We are hungry for more. And I would like to start with sharing a story that I came across in a book uh, about a Norwegian uh, Viking from the 9th century. His name is Sigurd Oystenson. And he was a jarl on an island in Norway. And he was a very famous warrior. He was winning a lot of battles and he was known as Sigurd the Great. People were afraid of him. He was a mighty warrior. And one day he, he was now facing his worst enemy. He was facing Melbrecht Tand. And you're wondering, where are we going with this? Just, just hang on. He was facing Melbrecht Tand. And they were in, in a very tough fight for a long time. But in the end, Sigurd won that battle. And he beheaded Melbrecht Tand. And he was so happy. He was so proud of over this victory. And he just decided, everyone back home in my village need to know that I won this battle. So he was tying the head of Melbrecht in his saddle as he was riding home and he was riding home for a couple of days and and without really noticing it at first that one of the tooth from Melbrecht's head was sticking out like this and it was making a, a big scar in Sigurd's leg and he came home with his scar now and and with a head in his hand but he got an infection in the scar and just a while later, he died out of that infection. So he was killing his enemy, but his enemy, even though he was dead, was killing him. When I read this story, I was thinking, it's exactly the same thing in the Christian life. When we've been winning victory, and I mean, victory is worth celebrating. It's worth rejoicing about. It's worth sharing the stories about God's faithfulness and what God is doing. But if we become proudful, if we get filled, filled with pride over what we have accomplished and, and we hold on too tight to the victories of old, that can become our defeat. That can be a stumbling, a stumbling stone in our path. The greatest hinder for future success, it is the success that we already had. If we rest on that, if we hold on to that, that can become our failure. And that's why I want to speak about hungry for more. We are not satisfied. We have experienced amazing things in SOS so far. We have seen God move. We have seen the miraculous. We have seen people coming to salvation. We have seen so many good and great things. But we are not going to be satisfied with that. Because we don't want to build a monument of the old things that God has done. We want to build a movement into the new that God is going to do because we know that God has so much in store for us if we can move forward into what God is going to do in the future. Sometimes the greatest hinder for what God is going to do next, it is what God has done in the future. If we think that God will repeat himself, 
If we think that the new things will come in the same form, in the same shape, in ways that we are used to, then we are far off and we're actually hindering what God is going to do. And we can even stop God's plan for the future. We need to understand that God will do something new. In Isaiah 43 and verse 19, he says, See... I am doing a new thing. Okay. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I want to say today, SOS Church, God is doing a new thing. And we need to perceive it. We need to see it. We need to welcome it. We don't want to be like Sigurd the Great riding around with milk brick. Tons, tons, head in our saddle, rejoicing over the past. No, we want to make, we want to move into the new, and we want to win new battles. You know, if if we become proudful, prideful, uh, this is going to happen. In James four and six, it's written that God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. God is opposing the proud. If you think that, let, let, let's just picture this in front of us. Let's say that we are in a game. You're playing American football. And God is letting you run with the ball. He's passing the ball to you. And you're running with the ball. You're preaching the gospel. You're leading people to salvation. You are leading people to healing. You're leading people to baptism in the Holy Spirit and deliverance. And, and you see God is moving and, and you're running with his ball. And you're doing touchdown after touchdown. Um, but what, what we can fail to realize after a while is that God is running ahead of you. And he's tackling your opponents. He is making the way for you. And he's letting you run with the ball. But when we became prideful, it, God is changing team. And when we now take the ball and we start to run, we wonder, what, what are all of these opponents? What, what are all of them coming from? And we, don't, we have forgot that it was God that was moving them before. And now God is playing against you. And, and you, you know what I mean? He will hit you. He will tackle you down and you will lay there on the ground. The ball will fly away. And you'll just realize, all right, I need to humble myself. It is not all about me. I wasn't as great as I thought that I was. But it was the grace of God that was upon my life. So what I want to say is that we need to humble ourselves. We need to catch what God is going to do next. Because I think that God has great, great things in store for us. If we, if we can be humble and if we can come to him in humility. All right, in 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2, it's written, Those who think that they know something do not yet know, uh, do not yet know as they ought to know. So if you think, now I know it, now I have everything figured out, then you don't know what you ought to know. What does that tell us? It tells us that we need to stay humble. We need to stay hungry. We have not arrived. We haven't seen anything yet compared to what we are going to see if we are walking with God and if we can stay hungry for more. You know, a lion that is full, that have just been eating, he doesn't hunt. We want to hunt for more. We cannot be satisfied or full with what God have already been doing before. But we need to come hungry in humility. You know, our strength is in what is broken. When we're coming broken to God, when we're coming hungry, that's where we can find our strength. And that's how we can see the next move of God take place. In Isaiah 57 and verse 15 is written for this is what the high and exalted one says he who lives forever whose name is holy i live in the high and in the holy place but also with one who is contrite and lowly in spirit to revive the spirit 
of those uh, of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. So God, he doesn't just live in what is holy and high, but he's living in the low. He's living in the broken. He's living in the humble. He's living in the need. He's living in, in, in this longing for something more. He's living, living in a crushed spirit. He's living in a broken heart. So if you feel I don't have it all figured out, I have failed in areas, I, I'm not perfect, God is living in that. So we don't need, need it all figured out, but we need to be ready and humble for more. You know, God cannot and will not fill a full jar. If you want God to fill you, you need to be empty. God cannot fill fill a full hand but an empty hand he can fill God is uh, God want to do something where there is a need where there is a place to fill and um, you know your strength uh, your strength it might impress other people they look at you and they, they, they just feel, wow, you have everything figured out. You are doing so well. You are a perfect Christian. Your strength might impress some people and your stories about what God have done before. But, but it's actually your weakness. It is your brokenness that helps you to connect with people. If we want to be able to minister to people, we cannot pretend to be perfect. We cannot pretend that we have it all. But we need to be humble. We need to be broken. Then people can come and they can start to eat from our life. And we can minister to people that are really in need. You know, I, I have a daughter. Uh, her name is Thea and she is three years old. And, and there is something that she loves so much, and that is fruit. Every day she wants to eat, like if she could choose, she would just eat candy and fruit. So often she is coming to me with an apple. And, but, but she cannot really start to eat it at once by herself because it's too big. So she's coming and asking, Dad, can you open the apple? And what she wants me to do is that I should take a bite. It's a good apple, I tell you. Ah, finish. Can you see now? Now it's open. And now she's able to start to eat and take a bite herself. She cannot do it when it's whole. And I think it's the same thing with our lives sometimes. If people look at us and they think, wow, you are perfect. Then it's hard for us to minister to them. But if we can come with our brokenness, if we can come with vulnerability, if we can come in humility, if we can come sometimes with tears, if we dare to be open, people can come and they can start to eat from our life and they can receive what God has given us. In Philippians 2 and 6 it's written about Jesus now. Who... Being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in a human likeness. Another translation says, he emptied himself. He was emptying himself of the glory and the position as God. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. When Jesus died on that cross, that's when he won his greatest victory. Jesus' greatest victory came when he was broken. Jesus' greatest victory came in his greatest humility. Jesus' greatest victory came from his greatest pain. It is not when, when, when we are suffering or going through hardships or painful times. It is not the time that, that we need to, to hide away. But it is a time that God can use. The problem is when we are prideful. The problem thing is when we think we know it all. That is the problem. But God 
God can use us when we are on our knees and say, God, I don't know how I will see my city change. When I'm on my knees saying, God, I don't know how I can see Stockholm change or Malmö change or Gothenburg change. But Jesus, I pray that you will do a miracle. I pray that you will change this city. When we are coming to God in that humility, that's when God can start to work and he can make a change. And I am hungry and I know that you are hungry to see a change in our cities and I will pray this night as we're coming together in Stockholm, in Gothenburg, in Malmö, it is that God is going to change our cities. We know that God is not done. We know that God has more and we're going to step into that in humility, hunger on our inside. Are you with me? All right, in Psalm 126, in verse 5, it's written, Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. I love that place. You know, we're coming to God. We are crying for our cities. We are praying for those in need. And we're sowing with tears. And then when we see the result, when we see people coming to salvation and turning to God, that's when we can lift up our hands and we can worship and sing with joy and celebrate for what God is doing okay what we are going to do now is that we will step into a moment when we're taking the Lord's communion together and I want you to get ready where you are just just after communion you will pray together in your groups but now I want you to go and grab a bread you can go and grab a bread if, if you're a leader in a group you can take it and start to distribute it I will try to break this big bread here and I will take a small piece so that I don't need to chew it as long as with apple so you can go and make a piece of bread ready for everyone in in the group and and then you can bring some grape juice or some some other juice so that you are ready and then I want us together to go to 1 Corinthians 11 and 23 and I think that this is going to be a powerful moment when we're taking the Lord's communion together all over Sweden and we're celebrating Jesus' death and resurrection. But I want to, to read this before we take it. Paul says this, he says that, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after a supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes okay so we will now make a declaration and a pro proclamation into the spiritual world in Stockholm in Malmö in Gothenburg we will proclaim the gospel Jesus death and resurrection and his lordship that Jesus Christ he is God and he has all power on heaven and on earth and so that is what we're going to declare together so then, whenever you eat the bread and or drink drinks from the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. All right. So, so in an un man, unworthy manner, this is actually something serious. We can sin against his his. Uh, the body and the blood of the Lord. Verse twenty-eight. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup for those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink a judgment on themselves that is why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep okay so this is something serious here but uh, but then he continues and says but if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves we would not come under such a judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not finally uh, be finally condemned with the world. 
All right. So this is actually for our protection. We are taking the Lord's communion and there is, there is a moment when we need to examine ourselves and we need to come in front of God and we say, God, is it something wrong in my life? God, is it something that I need to repent from? God, is it someone I need to forgive? Or is it someone that I need to ask for forgiveness, forgiveness from? And, and we, need to, we need to test our heart now. And there is something beautiful that is happening when we're testing our, our heart. It is that we are repenting for things that is wrong. So that we can keep on just living in God's protection. Uh, so right now I want to take a moment when you just examine your heart and you say, Holy Spirit, is it something in my life that I need to turn from? Holy Spirit, is it something that I need to ask for forgiveness for? And you just take that moment right now and you ask him. And, and you might feel, okay, there is something popping up. There is a question popping up or there is something you just feel, ah, I've been off in this. I've been talking the wrong way in this. Johannes, he's always saying that it is, you know, it is like washing your feet. When we're walking through this world, after a while our feet get, get dirty. We need to wash our feet again. That is the Lord's communion. Our feet are being washed away from that dirt. We don't need to be baptized again. We don't need to, to, to be, you know, Jesus don't need to be crucified again. But we are washing away the dirt from our feet. And we're testing our heart. All right, now I want you to take up the piece of bread that you have. And you hold it up in front of you. And you can close your eyes where you're sitting right now. And we're praying for this bread. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for this, this bread that is symbolizing your body. I thank you, Jesus, that your body was being broken for us. And I thank you that you took all our sins, all our sicknesses, all our pain. You took it all on that cross, Jesus. And I thank you that when your body was being broken, it's a parable about the curtain that was being broken into the holiest of holy, where your presence was in the temple. And I thank you that after that, your presence could be among the the people i thank you that when when your body was being broken when this bread was being broken you're opening up a way into that wonderful presence of god and i pray that you will release your presence in every life group in every home to everyone that are partaking of this communion right now for i pray that healing will take place when we are eating of this bread physical healing mental healing healing is coming to people strength Strength is coming to those that are weak. Oh, for those that are suffering maybe from, from this COVID-19, I pray it will disappear when they take of this bread. I pray that you do a miracle as we're partaking this together now. In the name of Jesus, amen. And we partake this bread together. It's wonderful. We're doing this as a church family all over Sweden right now. And then you're lifting up. If you have a small cup with a wine or, or if the leader in the group is having a cup of the wine, you just lift it up right now. And we're now praying for the wine together. We're closing our eyes and we're praying, Father, I thank you. I thank you for, for the blood of the new covenant. I thank you, Jesus for for your own blood that you gave your own blood for us i thank you jesus that you came down here to save us you came down here to rescue us and you came to new make a new covenant with with, with a law that was not written on stone tablets but you are going to write it in our heart and you are adopting us into the true vine i thank you jesus for this blood that are cleansing us from all unfiltheredness from all sin from everything wrong that we have ever done and we're lifting this blood up right now we are holding it up in front of the enemy we're holding it in between us and the enemy and we're, we're just sprinkling and holding up the blood of Jesus Christ over every family over every life group every over over every marriage and every kid and every every single we're holding this up 
over every member of SOS Church in Sweden. And we're just just thanking, thanking you, Jesus, for the blood of the new covenant that is making the whole difference in our life. And we bless this cup and we partake it now in the name of Jesus. And you take, take off this cup right now. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's wonderful that we can be together, even though we are in different locations. We are one body. We are in unity with one another. We are one family. We're standing shoulders to shoulders, and we are in this together. And the blood of Jesus is protecting you. Uh, we have now been proclaiming this into the spiritual realm, and I want us to move into a time of prayer. All right, and in this time of prayer, um, I, I, I want us to, st to, to just stand upon these promises from God. In Matthew 18 and 18, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And again... Truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything, and I tell you we are more than two right now, and if we can just agree upon anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For whatever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. And we know that God is spirit. So even if you are joining in this, this night by yourself, you are together with all of us. And we're doing this as a church family right now. So we're standing upon these promises as we are praying today. And our prayer points are, we will pray for SOS Church Stockholm, SOS Church Gothenburg, SOS Church Malmö, SOS Church Online Ministry, and our SOS Churches in Ethiopia and Kenya. And I want us now really to pray. First we start to pray for our churches here in Sweden, and we are interceding now for our cities. We are praying that God is going to change things around, and that we will see masses coming to salvation. And we're actually making it very personal. Let's all pray, God help me to win someone for you. God help me to lead someone someone to salvation in my city and then we know that one by one that, that is having the life change that's how we see a city being changed and then we pray for the online ministry you know here in Stockholm we've been having people coming to us that have watched our online ministry and they have received Jesus as the Lord and Savior and said please can I be baptized isn't that wonderful so let's pray that God pour out his anointing upon our online ministry and then lastly we want to stand together with SOS Church Ethiopia and SOS Church Kenya uh, as they're facing a very tough situation right now this COVID-19 I mean it's been it's been hitting us hard in Europe and, and in America but that's nothing to compare to the situation down in Africa where so many widows and single men cannot even provide food for their kids so let's stand in agreement and pray for provision for them but also let us do what we can to help them financially here in Stockholm we're going to make one last offering this Sunday when we are gathering money we have a goal of gathering 150,000 Swedish crowns this month and we have 65,000 to go so let's pray and then let's get ready to give this Sunday all right God bless you and let's pray now we because we know that prayer works have a great evening Jesus, the name of one who could ever 
We live for you. Oh, we live. 
Yes, our God is worthy of glory and honor. And we are going to continue to worship Him in just a second. But I just want to greet you and say that it's so wonderful to worship together with you today. And I want to, you know, say from, <laughs> from the throne room what I heard from God today. That, you know, if, if you haven't been in worship for a long time, maybe you haven't even thought about God for weeks. Or maybe you feel like in your faith you're in a bad place. You know, that is not a hindrance for you to join today. You know, if you've had the most perfect time with God, if you feel so close to Him, you just come on and worship together with us now. But it doesn't really matter what you've been through. And let's forget about the past and, and move on. Because the throne room is opened by grace, by Jesus. He opened up the way to the throne room. And you know, the way to meet with God is to open up your heart and to worship Him and to praise Him. And that's how you really connect with God today. So if you're longing for a meeting with God today, He is waiting for you. We are here to help you out. We're going to worship together with you so that you can meet with the living God today. So let's continue to sing this song with open hearts. As if it wasn't enough that you saved me, that you traded your own life for mine. You have promised me eternity together with you and made my heart your home. You not only turned failure to victory, when you stepped in and changed my whole life. Now you walk every day now beside me, leading me right. I'm so thankful for your love. I'm so thankful for your presence. I'm thankful for your love in my life, Jesus.
Thank you. 
Spirit. 